In this video, we're going to do a comparison between the GoPro Hero 8, the Insta360 ONE R, and the DJI Osmo Action to see which camera is the best camera of these three. <laughs> I've been waiting for this packet for such a long time and I'm so eager to put it up on the wall. These cameras are currently three of the absolute best action cameras on the market right now. We got the GoPro Hero 8 here on the uh, left flank. We got the DJI Osmo here on the right. And then Insta360 just released their Insta360 ONE R. Which is basically making them take a leap into the action camera segment because this is both an action camera and a 360 camera and it's like it's waterproof it's an interchangeable lens system but since it's an interchangeable lens system on this camera it also makes it like less protected towards water sand and all of those kind of stuff that you might want to put this bad boys through because i mean like they are action cameras right so i thought we should do a comparison of these three cameras see which kind of camera has the best video quality stabilization audio quality and build quality you know and all the different kind of good stuff that this camera has so uh oh sweet end during this time of year not something that I highly recommend you to try out. <laughs> Let's see which of these cameras has the best audio. This is what the audio sounds like in the DJI Osmo Action. And this, this is exactly what the audio sounds in the Insta360 ONE R. And this, this is what the audio sounds like in the GoPro Hero. I don't know why, but the GoPro didn't pick up my voice all the time. It just kind of like muffled my voice and then it came back on. Let me show you. This is the GoPro audio track. Let's see which of these cameras has the best stabilization. I'm currently having the Rocksteady on in the DJ. And when I was recording this, I hadn't put the camera into the water and I wasn't holding my finger over the microphone of the GoPro either. So super weird this is going to be the drop test we're going to drop each camera from one meter into the floor and see what happens gopro hero 8 insta 360 one r dji osmo action the gopro boots up it didn't get any dents or anything like that it survived the Insta360 starts up as well. I actually thought it would like separate, but it didn't. So that's good. The Osmo Action boots up just fine. So no dents or scratches or cracks or anything like that. So all cameras survived. Something that I like about the Osmo Action is that you can remove the actual lens protector. And if this were to break, then you can just replace it with a new one. And looking at the GoPro and the One R, you can't replace the actual like lens protection glass if something were to happen to it. So that's that's like a huge downside about these two cameras. This is gonna be the dirt test. I 
I guess you can say that the GoPro did not survive the durability test because the screen actually cracked. Kind of a surprise. I didn't think it would uh, break that easily. The Insta360 looks like it survived as well, but it's pretty banged up here in the back and I haven't picked it apart yet. So I'm like, I'm thinking it's gonna be a lot of gravel in this part. You ready? All right, like that. There seems to be like a little bit of water on the connector, which is not a good sign. Here's the battery. The test actually did make the locking mechanism work even worse than it was before. It still feels like this camera is definitely gonna be the most sensitive out of the three cameras. I do know that the GoPro does have really good stabilization, but let's compare the three side by side to see which camera actually has the best one. I'm currently having the Rocksteady on in the DJI Osmo Action, using the Flow State in the Insta360 ONE R, and having the, what is it called in the GoPro? Uh, I don't know, but I'm using a stabilization there too, so let's take it on! This is something you don't see very often. Peter Lindgren, take a run. Whew. Currently shooting all cameras in 4K 30. So let's see which one of these cameras does the best. I'm also having the settings all auto on all cameras. Okay, I really need to up my cardio level. So, when it comes to the stabilization, I do think that the Insta360 ONE R came out on top because it looks so steady when you compare it to the other two and like the flow state stabilization is just pure insanity when it comes to both the 360 version and the action camera version. So, huge thumbs up for the Insta360. When it comes to editing the actual footage of these cameras, I will say that Osmo Action and the GoPro is by far the best. And the reason for that is because when you are editing the footage from the One R, you have to use the Insta360 Studio app and export the files before you can actually edit that in Final Cut Pro, both if you're using the action camera lens or the 360 lens. I kind of want to be able to edit my footage as soon as I get to a computer without having to like opening a third-party app and then exporting the footage before I can actually start editing the footage in my main editing program. And that is kind of like a tedious process that I don't want to have and it kind of makes me not want to use this camera when you compare it to the Osmo Action or the GoPro. So what I really like about the DJI Osmo Action is that you have that front-facing display so that you're actually able to see yourself when you're shooting and when you want to turn the camera around then you can just switch this play without having to pick the camera apart. Even though you can switch out the display on the Insta360 ONE R, it does require like you to pick apart the camera, which is something you don't want to do. For example, if it's a day like this, where it's just raining and it's horrible weather outside. And I do think that the GoPro could have had a front-facing display instead of like the tiny LCD screen that they have right now. Okay, so I've been looking through the footage that I've shot with these cameras and when it comes to like the image quality of 4K video, I do think that the GoPro Hero 8 is coming out on top. And after that, it's the Insta360 and last place is going to be the DJI Osmo because I didn't think it looked that good, to be honest. But the fun thing is that when I switched over to slow mode to test out which camera actually looked the best when you were shooting 1080p in 200 frames per second. The GoPro was actually the camera that had the worst image quality and the DJI Osmo was the one that had the best image quality. And the Insta360 kind of looked a little bit better than the GoPro, but it wasn't that good. And since the One R is a 360 camera as well, I thought I'd give you my opinion on the 360 footage that you can shoot with this. I gotta say, I'm not impressed by it. I don't think it looks that good because even though it says like it's 5.7K, that means that the entirety of the image that the camera is capturing is 5.7K, but when you crop in, it doesn't look that good because the resolution is going down to like 1080p or even 720 if you wanna zoom in that much. So even though I do think it's cool with 360 and I do actually think that 360 cameras is the future of action cameras, 
I would have loved to see like an improvement of the 360 footage with this camera. But since you're gonna be able to switch out the lenses, maybe Insta360 will drop a mod with a better image resolution in a future 360 camera, who knows? So if I were to choose one of these cameras that I can use from here on and forward, then I would probably go for the GoPro Hero 8. And the reason for that is because the 4K looked really good and it does feel like a pretty solid camera. And when it comes to the Insta360, I do not like the fact that you have to open a third party app to be able to edit the footage when you're shooting with this camera because that is just another step that I had to do before I actually can edit my videos. And even though I do think that the DJI Osmo Action is a great camera, it wasn't on par with the GoPro Hero 8, but it's also an older camera and it's also cheaper than the GoPro and the Insta360. So, what do you think? Which camera do you think performed the best and which camera would you buy? I would love to know. So please do drop a comment below. And if you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up because it does help a lot. And if you haven't subscribed, that'd be highly appreciated. So thanks so much for that. And uh, oh, thanks for watching. And uh, Peter from Sweden, out.